All right, welcome back. So in the last video, we configured our flow and we got our get elements set up. And in this video, we need to start working with our loop. And so if you'll recall from the introduction series, uh, a loop lets you iterate over a collection of records. And we defined our collection with our get records element. And so now um, we can actually drag our loop to the canvas. So I'm going to drag the loop here and just drop it. And I'm going to call this loop through opportunities. And we are going to be looping through all the opportunities that we found from get related opportunities, our record collection variable. It doesn't really matter which direction we go. Um, I have found that it often doesn't matter. So I usually just leave this defaulted. Um, if you ever want to change it, again, it doesn't really matter. So you could go one way or the other. I'm going to press done. And then I will connect our get records to our loop and press save. And so now we have um, to go through, and if you recall in the primer video or in the introduction um, to loops, uh, a loop lets us kind of update every single record that is in our collection. And we have to define that update. And I don't know if I mentioned this previously, but one thing you're never supposed to do, and I'll repeat, never are you supposed to do this, is use one of these pink data elements inside of a loop. The reason you don't do that is because Salesforce has governor limits, which means that you can only perform so many of these database operations where you're creating, updating, uh, querying for, or deleting records in a single transaction. And so each one of these uh, pink items uses one of those governor limits, and the limit is uh, pretty low. I think it's like 100 for uh, queries, which it would be get records, and it's like 150 for these uh, create, update, or delete. And what that means is that if you are looping through 150 opportunities and you have a get records inside your loop, for each record, Salesforce will run the query. And if you have 150 records, the limit's only 100 queries per transaction. So 150 is greater than 100, and you will exceed that limit, and Salesforce will fail. Um, your transaction won't go through, and whatever automation you're performing won't work. And so the way we get around that is by um, not using the database elements inside the loop, and instead we use an assignment element. And so I'm going to drag this assignment element to the canvas, just drop it there. And we treat the assignment the same way we might treat uh, the update records element, where um, we will use it to define the updates we want to make. It's just that we don't save them into Salesforce, as it were, with the assignment element. We use the assignment element to change the record. We add that changed record to a new collection. And then later on in the flow, we update all the records at once. And so it's kind of like a batch update. And it's much more efficient on the Salesforce backend. And if you don't totally understand that right now, uh, don't worry. Just know that uh, you don't want to use any of the pink boxes inside the loop, yellow boxes only. <laughs> that's the simple version. And uh, as you go through your flow building career, you'll uh, come to understand why more and more. So let's um, set up our assignment here. And we'll just call this update opportunities. And what we're going to do here is I am going to click the variable section. And again, when we make a loop, Salesforce creates a record single variable to represent the current item in the loop. So the loop could have 10 records, it could have 20 records, and you know those that record count will be based on the number of records we found in our get elements or that we manually defined in a collection somehow. But the loop will let us work on each record in sequence. So one by one, we're going to go through. And for the current item in the loop, uh, we can update particular fields. And in this case, we are going to update, um, as you might guess, the opportunity notes field. So I'm scrolling all the way down here, and I'm going to select opportunity notes. And take a second here and just look at the merge syntax. So we have uh, the loop through opportunities merge syntax, and that represents the current record in the loop. And then we see the little dot. And after the dot, we have the field for the record that we're updating. And so uh, when you click off, um, I guess, onto the assignment somewhere other than in the variable, it uh, kind of populates. And you see that it reads current item from loop. And then it has the name of the loop, which is loop through opportunities. And then it has the field name after the dot syntax. And we could add several fields here to update if we wanted. In this case, we only want to update that one field. So we don't need to. But you could, uh, in theory, update as many fields as you want on the record. And again, uh, 
the loop represents one by one each item from the collection. So if we, uh, if our get records found five opportunities, our loop will let us work uh, from first to last or last to first, depending which one uh, you pick, uh, and update fields on each of those records individually. So that's what we're doing here. And in this case, we are going to define uh, the opportunity notes, and we're going to set that to be equal to uh, whatever the triggering opportunity is. And so uh, you can see that we've used the record single variable of our loop to define the field that we're going to update. And to get the value, again, we're going to scroll down to the global variables, and we're going to select the opportunity record that triggered our flow. So I'm going to click that open, and we are just going to reference that opportunity notes field that um, is on the original opportunity. And so the way this reads is that we are going to assign the current records opportunity um, notes, the current records opportunity notes, and use that to set the item from the loop. And so again, that could be 10 opportunities, it could be one opportunity, it will depend if we found anything in our uh, collection variable. And so we're just going to set each item in the loop equal to the notes field of our triggering opportunity. And we'll press done. And then I'm going to connect the loop uh, to the assignment, and we are going to use the loop connector of for each item in the collection. And I'll press done. 